is up guys how's everybody doing tonight quick live stream uh don't have a huge plan tonight but i got some new adafruit parts you guys are going to see a, a full mailbag coming up on the channel but Long story short, I'm going to start playing with the Adafruit Feathers. Cheers, Austin. Glad you could make it. These are the 32U4 version with the LoRa uh, radio system on board. And I got some side-by-side... Proto board system with it, and I thought, well, I'm just gonna solder these up, and for no good reason, I thought maybe you guys might be interested in joining me live. I have never played with the Adafruit feathers whatsoever, this is entirely new to me. Uh, totally new system, and it looks like the headers they provide are actually over length. That's weird. Normally everything that comes from Adafruit is cut to length. So we'll just cut that. Yeah, that's actually quite surprising. We're gonna cut that. John is here. Cheers, John. Ryan. Glad to see you guys on the bench. Before we get started, I got the soldering irons warming up. Actually, We'll turn that one up in a second. I've got my Unger. It should be warmed up, no problem. That's my trusty uh, tried and true and the whip. Uh, I can't fire it up to full temperature until I'm ready to use it because honestly, it can actually melt the irons. It can actually melt the tip right out of the cheap plastic case on them uh, at the temperature I run at. So before we do that, I want to show you guys something. Oh no, what the heck? I need more webcam length. What's going on here? Check this out. We have, this is coming up on the channel, you're going to see uh, a full review of my new function and arbitrary waveform generator. I am super happy with that. I was playing with it right before the broadcast. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier. And then, as well, in the background, we got a new USB microscope. Check this out. Let's, let's try it. This is going to be more of a, a test out everything live stream. So that is the quality. This is a 640 by 480 USB microscope. It is not that fantastic, but if you want to throw a circuit board underneath it, this is the quality we get from far distance. Now I can go way closer and zoom in and focus, but you guys tell me. Is this going to be uh, an interesting little addition to the broadcast? Better than my previous USB microscope? I can tell you it's a heck of a lot easier to use because of the stand here. If you look in the top right, um, it comes with it like it's it's chintzy. It is nothing fantastic. It is an eBay special, but I can't argue with success. Now I can just take the components here on the live stream and I can just go up here and I can switch scenes and boom. Now I can show you guys what's going on. I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? I think this is going to be a valuable little addition. Maybe. I don't know. Can't hurt, right? This go pick looks good. Absolutely. Mitch is here. Cheers, Mitch. Thanks, John. Appreciate the feedback. Well, I still have a lot of work to do with the cameras. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. So I'm running C920 webcam and then an ancient webcam up here that you guys can get like a bench view. And I have a long way to go on the live shows. I do a lot better on my main videos, I think. But eh, we'll get there. So what we'll do is we're going to find out header, header, and then we're going to have to trim this to length. Go ahead and take the trusty side cutters, and we will give her the old snipperoo. And look at that. 
we got it right first try. So I think we should be good. We should be able to solder that. And then we'll move up from there. So uh, I don't have the screen share shut up. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have the screen share. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Set up. But I do have a, a, a full circuit designed for this using the LoRa Wi-Fi or the LoRa radio, 900 megahertz radio, to go out to another one of these. Uh, it's reading current from a high, relatively high voltage, 690 volt three-phase system, uh, monitoring current flow through it uh, for my day job. So let's let's go ahead and. Should we try and solder under the microscope? I think we should. I think that would be fun. I think, why not? Oh yeah. <laughs> and also, here's a, a, a sneak peek for you guys coming up on the channel. Back here in the corner is my new SMD reflow oven. That is a T962 infrared reflow oven. And what it, <laughs> in my testing of this and making videos on it, I learned uh, don't put your reflow oven on your bench because you will destroy your bench. That kind of sucks. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it, uh, it warped my... Uh, <laughs> my mat here so now everything won't sit flat like no matter what I do all right this is my first uh my first try with this so you're gonna have to you guys are really gonna have to bear with me but I think what we'll do oh, well actually that's not gonna be too bad providing I can actually keep the pin I'm working on under the microscope Hopefully, if nothing else, one of the other two will catch it. I'm going to go ahead and we'll turn the iron up to where we need it to be. Might not use that iron anyway. We'll get our nifty little copper uh, waste bucket out. We'll get some 60-40 solder. And we should be good to go. I think. Uh, cheers, watching from Chromecast in my bedroom. Wife is out of town. Cheers, Mitch. That's awesome. Julian says hello. Now you can use stencils. Yes, I can. Yes, actually, uh, we're going to be doing some SMD work on the channel, if you guys haven't already uh, caught on to that. Should be a lot of fun. All right, let's go with the old Unger to get started. Oh yeah, before before we do that, let's be smart. Let's get something else rigged up. Let's not end up to be a statistic, and let's use some fume extraction. It will add some noise, but it probably shouldn't be too bad. So this is. Uh, the 486 fume extractor, it's just a fan with a charcoal filter, but man, it works great. If you set it off to the side and turn it on, let's, I'll show you guys, can you catch this on camera? Yep, you should be able to. You should be able to hopefully see Yon Smoke head back that away towards the fan. Eh, not so good actually. That's going to have to be a little closer. There we go. You guys should be able to see that now. Most of the fumes should go into the extractor. If nothing else, they're going far away from my face. So that's good. Let's do that. Safety first. Safety first. All right. So what we'll do, let's tack. Let's first figure out where we're at. Let's tack one. Probably good enough. We're going to make sure we've got the header. I'm not going to refocus that, but the, the header is flat to the board. That's good. 
one's enough for now. We'll go ahead and do the other one. Try and get it so that we're... You can tell when the pins are sitting basically in the center. You can tell you're sitting flat at 90 degrees with the header. And you can go ahead and start soldering. Honestly, I don't like this... Well, I love this unger, but... I don't like the unger for this particular task. There. Yeah. A little excess solder on there. Let's see what tip I've got on the other one. Actually, we have a better tip on the unger right now. The WEP has a really bad tip on it. Let's go ahead. Let's solder these up. Let's go ahead and retouch this one because that's a pretty crappy bulge that looks better I'll show you guys from the side when we're done but for now we'll just make sure the header's flat and it is we can go ahead and we can hit this apologies if it goes off camera I'm going to try this is a new experience for me soldering under a brand new USB microscope Okay, well, I can already tell you that that sucks. We're chasing that. No bueno. We gotta do better. We gotta do better. Let's go ahead and do something about that. We can't be chasing our component all over. This, uh, this surface is very, very slippy. Insanely slippy. No bueno. <laughs> this would be so much easier if I didn't have to video it. I guess I don't have to tighten things down. I guess I can just sort of get it kind of good enough. Yeah. Should be focus. There we go. You guys can follow along with that, at least for a couple of joints. All right, we'll go ahead and, I don't know whether you can see this, now it's off camera. I'm just tinning the tip of my iron, then I shake it off, retin it again, shake it off, knock my stuff completely out of frame, and then we'll go to work. That's no good. That's better. That's bueno. Bueno. I bet you we're off frame. <laughs> Not so bad. I might be able to pull this off. Heat the post. Heat the pin. Solder it in. Heat the pin. Solder it in. Absolutely gorgeous. Pull some more solder out. This is just a cheap Rat Shack 6040 blend. If it hasn't flowed down in, give it some time. We don't want cold joints here. I am going to be putting this, well, hopefully this board. This is going to be the prototype of a new tool. But if not this one, then the next one. We'll be going into some pretty hard service, so I want to make sure we have some good joints. Beautiful. Now, these first ones, I know you can't tell from the top view, but they were not the best. And now they are much better. This board actually takes a little bit more heat than what I thought. All right, let's take a look. How did we do? Let's focus. Come on. Focus. Focus. Oh, yeah. That's better. So that's what you're aiming for. You're aiming for joints that look like this. I see so many soldering t tutorials and stuff on YouTube, and I'm not proclaiming to be any expert, but I can tell you 
those are pretty respectable. With that one, not the best. See the volcano look at look to it that kind of bulges towards the top. That 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 indicates that it didn't have quite as much heat as say the ones on either side and didn't quite flow in just perfect. But there, there definitely nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to touch that up. It's it, it's totally acceptable. But that's what you're aiming for. Nice and shiny, not not this ugly pastel I don't know how my camera is picking it up but these are like yeah you're, you're aiming for nice and shiny and and that's what we got so we can go ahead we can do the other side uh, take some time and make sure that your solder joints are good it, it, it truly matters because bad habits on this last a lifetime and I've seen way 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 too many bad 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 soldering tutorials and they will start off by not starting out with something clamped down <laughs> catch up with the chat blue tack works well absolutely ah blue tack works fine but uh so does this clamp for some reason I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> what temperature is your iron? So this uh, this unger that I'm running here is temperature controlled uh, that does not tell you the temperature. I've had this thing for going on 20 years now, and I don't know what temperature this 5200 unger runs. But I can tell you, in my guess, it would be around the 350 mark. It, that's what I keep my whip set to sometimes higher depending but only to compensate for poor performance uh, this unger it it just throttles up immediately upon the tip needing any more power uh, it, it just works whereas these you got to have them cranked a little higher but you got to be careful because this thing will fry boards and this one will not so for tonight we're going to stick with this low voltage 5200 unger Absolutely. Blue tack for the win, guys. All right. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to tin our tip again. I don't know how people get away without a splash pad, to be honest. You'll see this little tin lid here. This is where I, I clean my tip. I flick it off. I clean my tip. And then I tin my tip. And now we can go to work. And that's when we go to the board. And you'll notice that the first joint will be pristine and clean pristine and clean no oxidization no gunkies and we can just boom 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 if I wasn't oh god if you guys could actually see it if I wasn't on camera this would be a heck of a lot easier we could just rattle off the whole board I'm not even under a magnifying glass I am pretty far away and I was looking up at the computer, so that one went a little sideways, but it's good. It's good. We're going to try again. Clean our tip because we got a little gunkies. We're going to tin it again. Honestly, that joint looks like it could use a little rework because I was staring up at the computer. All right, back to business. You always want to have a little tin on the tip. That way it conducts to the pin. Add a little solder. Go off camera. Try it again. This time on camera. Now I'm trying to solder while I'm looking over my right shoulder. That's not working. This is a... You guys are going to have to... Well, eventually this will get easier. It's hard to live stream and solder, but overall, let's have a look. How did we do? Let's get rid of the iron. Focus and see how we did. All right. I'm not going to use the word perfect, but damn, that'll do. That one. I've seen better. I've seen better. Perfect. I've seen better. Perfect. Perfect. 
I am going to use the word perfect just because I don't. <laughs> and that one has some gookies just from the rosin, but if we look from the top or kind of refocus, we can see how well we extended up the posts. And for a basic microcontroller, that'll do. That will do. This camera doesn't do the best. My other camera did better with the reflections. This seems to make things look a little bit more opaque than they really are. There is a one hell of a shine on those components, on those solder joints, I assure you. But that microscope, it doesn't pick it up the best. But here you go. Now you can see. So there's nothing to this. This is just soldering a basic microcontroller. The key, get the solder on there. Don't make bridges. Make it good. And make sure your headers are 90 degrees. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Not much beyond that. All right. Catch up on the chat. Benjamin's here. Haven't caught you in ages. Yeah, cheers, Benjamin. Solder looks cool when it splashes on the floor and cools. Yeah, it, uh, well, it does this. Actually, I cleaned my pan. I, I'm, yeah, <laughs> for once, my, my splash pan is relatively clean. All right, next. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So, how are we going to do this? This one we soldered as the proto for that shield. But the next one we're going to need as uh, a backpack system. Well, here, I guess we can just do, I guess we can just do this. We can do the side by side feather wing shield thing. And then which way do these go? Man, oh man. I'm not familiar with these at all. Let's start with one side then. I would have thought it would be the other way round. Well, which is the pins? SCL and SCA are down at the far end. That doesn't make sense. That can't be right. I might have to read the instructions. <laughs> what happens if we go the other way? All right. So SCL and SCA, that makes more sense serial clock and serial data are down at that end. So we must have to go on the widest. The widest of the breadboard. And then they carry across to the other board. That would that would seem to make sense, and they don't interfere with these pins on this side, which would be bad if they did. I'm going to say that's probably correct. I'm going to say that's 80% certain correct. I should RTF him. I really should. I have never, I, I've been in ESP8266 land for too long. And uh, Arduino Nanos, which is almost the same form factor, which is totally cool, by the way. So these extend through, that can't be right. I've got two sets of headers, one shorty, one longy. Ah, it can't be right. We don't need them extending through for this. We can use the shorties. Because we're not going to put this, sh this uh, proto board 
into a breadboard. Now, we don't need to put it into a breadboard. Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. RX, TX, yeah, they don't break those out. SDA, SCL, yeah, that would make sense. All right, let's solder it up. Let's solder it up. Let's go ahead and tack these on. Let's, let's do it. It's not going to do it. That will should do it. I'll just tack one header on. And then uh, we'll take the other header and we're going to double check that we need the widest. Pretty sure we did. We did. We're going to say that's right. Until proven otherwise. I am wrong a lot of the time, though. Especially when working with hardware that I haven't played with. But this is the beauty of why I got this proto. What in the... F <laughs> Come on now, don't be like that. We'll solder on an unflat bench. <laughs> it's just eyeballing it. <laughs> it was not true at all. It was something special for a moment there. All right, let's see. How did we do? Guessing that... Uh, I'm guessing that... Uh, we got things half arsed close. You know what? I might do the OLED first. But so ultimately, I need to plug in an OLED next door to this. But there we go. That'll do. So we can go ahead and solder these. We can leave that plugged in or we can take it out. I think I'll just leave it plugged in for now and we'll go ahead and solder up these connections. Now I shouldn't need the third hand anymore. John says it's Sunday in New Zealand. It's still Saturday here in the US. Mr. Zero. Right on guys. All right, let's go. Microscope. Let's solder up some connections. Because, well, we like to solder. This is what we do. All right. I'm going to try and keep it on camera, but... Oh, yeah. That's not going to work. It's still too light. Not heavy enough. There we go. Get the old third hand to give it a little bit of mass. Let's focus it a little bit for you guys. I should do. Retin, splat. Retin, splat. Clean. Ready to rock and or roll. Done. 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 Am I on camera? Done. Moving target. Done. Moving target. Done. Roll it down. More solder. Done. 
in. Go. Move it down. Let's move it down a little further. Oh, we got to reposition. This is flopping all over the place. Every time I touch it, it's flopping around. <laughs> Honestly, if I was just... If I was just doing this, it would be much, much easier. <laughs> it's only four joints left to go. <laughs> but we'll reposition for the camera because, well... You guys are nice enough to join me on a Saturday night. I might as well try and at least capture this for you. Done. Done. And if you put your iron just a little bit, if you caught that just a moment ago, you can actually preheat the next pin as you're moving along if you set the iron between them. And the solder won't work across to the next one on you. It won't be a problem. And those are fantastic. And slightly out of focus. I'm sure I can do better for you. There you go. Good, 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 good. If we turn them up on their side, where you guys can get a better look at what I've done. Now, far less solder on these ones. We've come up to temperature and done a far better job. Almost a tiny bit too little, but definitely not bad. They could have a, like, that could have a touch more. They could have a touch more, but they're not a cold joint at all. So, absolutely fine for this application. I hope the feedback on these is of interest to you guys. I don't know. Um, I know it's it's tough when you're starting out to know what you're looking for in a good joint versus a bad joint. And it's just something you kind of get a feel for as time goes on. But unless someone really shows you what good and bad is, it's it's quite tough. And this overhead view does not lend itself to understanding whether the joint is good or not. Because truthfully, you can't tell from a straight up and down. You guys can't tell watching this stream whether it's a good joint or not until I show it from a little bit of a side view. But you can at least see the technique of how I'm bringing in the iron, giving it some solder. Done. Bring in the iron, solder. Wait till it flows. That one took a little longer. Not so good because we spread to the hole right beyond it a little bit, which is undesirable. There we go. Bring it in. Introduce. It actually looks a little lax. There we go. These ones are taking quite a bit more solder than what I thought. But that's easy to accommodate even without being able to see a microscope view. You'll get the idea. Next. Done. Not done. More. Done. Done. My monitor is about four feet over my right shoulder, so Forgive me, I'm still getting used to being able to get this to work on the webcam. But there we go. Let's take a look. Let's see how we did. You guys are going to see it first with me. How did we do? Come on now. Focus and stable. Alright. Good, good. Little gobby, little gobby. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Done. Done. Done like Diener. Thank you, Benjamin. I appreciate your contribution. Uh, I'm just going to catch up on the chat. Sorry, guys. I was really, really heavy into that. What model of scope 
is that from John? Uh, if you mean back there, that's the Rigel DS1052E. Very, very old. If you're talking about the microscope, you will see a full review coming up on the channel. It's a bottom of the barrel eBay special. It was the only one that, that I could find that had a stand for a very budget price. Uh, I'll, I'll share it once I, I test it out a little bit more. Um, uh, leaded too smooth for non-lead. Yes, this is indeed 60-40 leaded solder. Uh, I, I don't use un, uh, lead free at all. I was going to say unleaded. Why don't we call solder that's lead free unleaded? That's an kind of interesting thought. Um, so envious of the soldering station, still using the Canadian Tire 999. Yeah, get yourself a good soldering station. And this is not a good one. This WEP will do. This this will do everything that the Unger will do. I, I simply love this. Uh, it's a 898D, it's labeled, because it has the reflow, the hot air rework built in. It works absolutely fantastic. It is dirt cheap. The, the replacement irons cost nothing. Replacement tips cost nothing. Like, I buy these for, like, four bucks from eBay China, and if I forget to lower the temperature, they do, um, <laughs> like, this is so hot right now, you can't touch it. I cannot put my fingers there. It is, it is well and truly crazy hot. If we're not going to use it anymore, I'll shut it off. It will melt itself out, because... <laughs> What can you expect for the price? But they work. And then up here off camera, I keep a complete spare that I just plug in. And it's not a spare. This is a very fine point uh, conical tip that I use for SMD rework for surface mount. And I've just taken my pliers and bent it. And because they're so cheap, it's it's no big deal for the tips and the irons. And when I want to go to SMD, I just unplug that one, plug this one in, and set this one on the bench. And then I'm ready to go. And then I, if I want to go back to the wedge, I can go back to the wedge tip. Or if I want to use my good old Unger, which is a conical, uh, halfway between a conical and a wedge. It's it's an interest, like It is a wedge style tip, but it's quite uh, weird dimensions. I use this one. So, yeah, it works fantastic. I'm pretty happy with this setup. It is budget priced, except for, well, the Unger, which you'll never find anymore because I'm pretty sure they're long extinct years ago. Maybe, maybe not. Um, uh, yes, the microscope. Yeah, cheers, John. <laughs> ROHS compliant, lead free, yeah, absolutely. But it's a pain, it takes a whole lot more time. Uh, it's got to get shiny and get giant from the whiskers. Yeah, yeah, lead free, just a bunch of junk. That's weird. Message retracted. Huh, okay. That was on the super chat. Uh, how good is the hot air part? Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I simply love this device. Check this out. You just pull it off, and I'm dialed into 400 degrees. And I throw my soldering iron on my plate, and it's running. And I can throttle up and down my fan. And I throw it back on the cradle. That's what that nifty little chunk of aluminum tape is there to stop me from burning the heck out of my backdrop. And it's done. And it cools off. And you just leave the fan on on a low setting and let it cool. Uh, even for just heat shrink, this is the handiest thing. And to be honest, that's what I used it for for the longest time was just heat shrink tubing. Uh, so much, much easier. But then when I tried it on surface mount components, uh, like... For example, just two weeks ago, I resoldered the, uh, I did the uh, remote control repair here on the channel. Uh, we used that way back there. That's my ultrasonic uh, cleaner, my ultrasonic water bath, and we used it to clean up a remote control. Well, after I was done, the remote control was a little intermittent. 
and I needed to reflow the chips I figured would be the best because the thing gets dropped on the floor. I'm sure there was crack solder joints in it. And I just took this. I took my my flux syringe, which is uh, just MG Chemical Snow Clean Flux. I fluxed it up. I used this, reflowed all of the SMD components on the board. It took me like under two minutes, let it cool, and the thing has been a champ ever since. Uh, that alone, basically, well, that paid for the price of the reflow, pretty much, just so I didn't have to buy a new remote control, because those things here, they charge in like 40 bucks for those stupid things. Anyway, um, Hill says Unger is long gone, unfortunately. Ah, it's good to... Well, it's good to know. It's it's really too bad because this thing my father gave this to me when I was a teenager, uh, back when I started as a mechanic. Actually, before I started as a mechanic, so pre-16 years old. And I won't tell you guys how old I am now, but I'm far from 16. And uh, I have not. That is the the same tip. And this thing has run thousands of hours. Now I did take a little Scotch Bright to it the other day because it was getting um a little tiny bit funky looking but the tip was fine honestly I don't even know where I'd ever get a tip that fits it because it's a really interesting call it setup that screws on this thing just it just bloody works it's even ceramic check this out up on the spring this is this is the quality that they did this is actually a, a chunk of ceramic like corningware dishes in your kitchen uh, just like as compared to uh, cheap tin, cheap spring, plastic, plastic, plastic. Unbelievable. Just, yeah, different time, different era. And, and that's not that long ago. And I'm not talking like 70s or 60s. This is only like not that long ago. This is the 90s era. I would imagine that that thing was manufactured. Maybe, maybe late 80s. Uh, Super chat fail was going to give ten dollars, but missed a zero and didn't even show my message, just my name, so I pulled it. Oh, okay. Oh, cheers, Benjamin. Doe. No super chat for me. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate the thought. You guys don't have to contribute on super chat. It's just not a requirement to watching this channel. All right. What should we do next? I'm all over the place, guys. This is fun, though. I like. Like building, like building all the things. All right. So what we've got here is the Adafruit OLED feather wing that will go on top of not this one because this is going to be our proto for side by side. This one is going to go on top of one of the other ones. So I'm just going to think about this for just a second. We need to be sure that. So these actually have two sets of headers. Again, I'm sorry, I am not a feather expert, so I have to check and recheck everything. I don't know what set, like I know those pins are just paralleled up on each other, but I don't know which one they bloody well use. And I assume it's the outboard ones, and it is. It's the outboard ones, seemingly. So we can go ahead and safely, I, I, I can't screw these up. I I gotta get, well, we could fix it, but I want to make sure we get it right. So we can go ahead and put the headers into the outboard most holes. One is longer than the other. Then we will go back under the microscope. Let's see, did they get the headers? Oh no, they gave me the same again. They didn't trim the headers again. Oh, that's alright. They're not trimmed, it's okay. So when you throw them on the floor, we're going to have to trim one again. Let's go ahead, try not to mess it up. But I do have spare headers in the bin, so it's not the end of the world. But measure twice, cut once. And if you're Eric, you will measure four times, cut once, and still get it wrong every time. Nope. <laughs> we're in business. We got it right. All right, go ahead. I'm gonna check the chat real quick and then we'll go ahead and start soldering again. All right, 
Let's go ahead. Solder some stuff. Let's solder all the things. First things first, we're going to attack it. Just attack one terminal. Hopefully at approximately 90 degrees. Ouch! <laughs> we will stick Eric's finger on it far sooner than he should have. Brilliant. Freaking brilliant. Alright. <laughs> uh, let's try the other one. Let's try and do it under under the microscope somewhat. Under the microscope, Eric. I feel like David. Come on, Watts! I heard a loud sound from the desktop. John! Thank you, John. see the message just cheers Eric thank you John that was above and beyond I really appreciate the donations guys it really really every penny of it goes back into the channel and allows me to get more parts such as well this USB microscope that was paid for from the generous donations of people like yourselves and I will add it to the store linked below at store.makeme.org if you guys feel so inclined to purchase one. Once I review it a bit more. Don't buy one yet. Not until we put it through its paces a little bit more and have a decent idea of what we're up against here. Um, Julian, off-topic question. Have you planned or thought about when you might get back to the Autonomous Vehicle Lander Project? I forget what you named it. It was like the Mars Lander thing. Yes! <laughs> David comes out of the woodwork. <laughs> A wild David Watts has appeared. Julian, um, yes, I have. In fact, the parts are off camera right now, uh, but some parts arrived for that for our big robot project and I do intend on getting back to it. <laughs> the question is is when. I need to 3D print some components and I'm not sure what honestly I might just wait until I have my next am I on the right terminal? Yep. My next 3D printer which is coming from Gearbest in a a few days. Um, yes, but the long story short, I will be getting back to that project. We have the, oh, come on. Um, we have the, that was really bad. I bridged right to the, the hole behind it. Check that out. See, oops. It doesn't matter in this case, but that's what happens when you're not paying attention and when you, overreach so to speak uh, sorry uh, what was I saying the the robot I think a safe estimate would be probably in a month or two would be when we could get back to it I think mid April would be the best case scenario but I do want to pick it up. I do have like I'm not I'm not going to abandon it at all. Uh, that's a, a something I really wanted to play with this winter. I wanted to have an autonomous Mars lander just sort of running around my basement. Ideally, I wanted it running around in my backyard. To be honest, um, that was my original plan, and then I stepped it back to do uh, start with the indoor version <laughs> first. Uh, only because I couldn't get a four-wheel drive chassis, to be honest. Otherwise, I would have went right with the outdoor version, and then, uh, and then that would have been a lot more fun, because then I could let it run around the backyard and have the Raspberry Pis sending me telemetry and video and stills all the time. But I think 
because of the chassis we're stuck with, I think we're going to have to go with an inside version. All right, let's take a look. How did we do? I know I was yakking that whole time, but let's see how we did. All right, what do you guys think? You guys tell me in the chat. How do those joints look? Finger for scale. Finger for scale. Honestly, that one... That one, the way the reflection looks, it actually looks like a cold joint. But I can tell you it's not. It is just the... Well... No, I, I know it's not. Not with the heat that that iron was pumping in there, but that one looks funny. Let me take a look. Just because it's annoying me. I'm going to touch it up. <laughs> it's going to drive me nuts unless I do. All right. There we go. Now how do we do? Tell me in the chat. What do you think? Think we won? I think we might have won. I'll let you guys decide. Okie dokie. <laughs> this is like the longest, <laughs> the longest header soldering in history. But, uh, that's fun. I can tell you, it's a lot harder to do when you're looking th over a, a camera. Sorry, I'm basically asleep. It's a negative result of clicking that bell icon. Sorry, David, but I'm glad you could be here. Fair enough. I wasn't calling you out or anything. Just really stoked about that project. Absolutely, Julie. Me too. Uh, me too. Uh, such a fun... No, yeah, I, d I didn't think you were calling me out at all. Just uh, absolutely... I don't know. It's a project I've wanted to do for a long time. I want my own little Mars rover. I want my own s relatively, like, not maintenance-free. I want something that that I can go out there and do. Like, it's not going to do science in my house or anything or in my backyard, but it can sure as heck uh, stand in for it and do something along the same lines that I felt like I did something similar. Are we on camera? Close enough. I almost should just pull up the Discord and then I could have people give me feedback. Are we on camera? Yes. Because I can't read the chat from where I'm at. Not even close. Clean the tip again. Tim the t anytime that you're not... Anytime that the tip's idle and and not remaining wet... Like, even those few seconds there. Notice how I retinned it and cleaned it and retinned it again? That's what you should be doing. Off camera. And that one was long enough. So I'll retin it and do it again. If the, if the tip is not shiny and wet, you should not be putting it to a component. That is my advice to people, because you will end up with a garbage that I see on YouTube that, see, that, that's garbage, but, and actually that's kind of garbage too, but the rest of these, see how they're clean and shiny, and if I tilt and refocus, you can see that they're wet all the way out. And clean and perfect. Well, not perfect, but that one, not so much. That one is fugly. And it, that one's actually fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You could leave it like that. But because I'm stressing <laughs> the points of soldering on a live stream, we need to get a bit of that off of there. That is far too much solder for that joint. And the one next to it was about, I'd say, 20% too much solder for that joint. There we go. See? That's more like it. Out of focus, but heck. Good enough. That's what we're shooting for. Something ex well, <laughs> not that. That that there, that there, there, solder ball. That's bad. We weren't supposed to do that. But, 
There we go. Now we're ready to take this OLED and fire it into one of these feather wings. And once I find the other headers, which are over in the heap here, oof, I will solder those on and then we can do a side by side on this proto this proto board. And I will do the electronics. Um, we're hooking a current transformer through a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack through some passives and then an audible buzzer and stuff. And again, like I mentioned before, I'm not sure how much of this project I'll share on the channel because I am doing it for my day job. There's, n I don't think they're going to be pursuing any protections or anything on it, but you never know. So uh, we'll just keep it to the basics here on the channel. And I think, I think that's enough for the moment, truthfully. Um, you guys let me know what you think. Thanks, David. Cheers. John says, yes, shiny, wet tip. Uh, yes. If it's not shiny and not wet, do not touch it to anything. All right, guys, I think we're going to call it at that. I'm glad, uh, glad I got to catch up with you guys. It was a fun night. Just, uh, just some silly component soldering and something to do. Uh, what better way to spend a, a hour or so on a Saturday night? I will catch up. With, click a thumbs up on this if you like these videos, guys. It really, really helps the channel. Let's me know you guys are out there. And otherwise, I will catch up with you guys in a couple of days. Have a great weekend. Cheers.